It's one of Victoria's oldest public schools, but it's helping lead the government's education revolution in both teaching strategies and architecture. Using a $45 million state grant, Dandenong High School on the outskirts of Melbourne now houses 2,100 students and boasts 66 languages. It's now one of the country's biggest public schools with one of the lowest teacher-student ratios of 1 to 17. And classrooms have made way for open-plan learning environments to inspire thinking and creativity. And while it might lie in one of the most socially disadvantaged areas, it's also environmentally progressive. Rachel Brown reports. I'm interested in music, sound engineering. I want to become a doctor. I've said to some people, I'll be the next Prime Minister, but I doubt that's going to happen. These large dreams have been born out of very meagre beginnings. But stories of struggles are a common thread in Dandenong's social fabric. The outer southeastern suburb playing host to a cocktail of social issues and a high crime rate, with assaults and drug offences soaring over the past year. Dandenong is um, one of Australia's most socio-economically deprived areas. It's an area to which uh, refugees come as their first place of living in Australia. Uh, it's a place uh, where unemployment has traditionally been very high. In a radical move to try to stave off some of the next generation's social problems, three local high schools are using state grants to merge, morphing into a school of the future. We have a vision that is greater than any individual, certainly greater than me, and it's about engagement of students to produce uh, long-term hope for them in a community that is a pretty desperate place at times. These ex-army barracks portables will make way for seven eco-learning centres to house 21 children. Not an easy assignment considering this school's melting pot of cultures, languages and backgrounds. Where one pupil studies might be another's biography. I was really young, I was six years old and um, my parents got killed. They took everything away from us like, and we had to struggle to, to come to another place. 18-year-old Hamed Barr escaped from Sierra Leone in 1996 after rebels shot dead his parents, seized his sister and burnt down their home. From the slums, his fate brightened when he was granted international refugee status and shown photos of Melbourne. I, think I saw all the buildings. Um, I was like, it's like a paradise. And I imagine like, oh, how wonderful this place is. And um, what could I make? How could my life become if I come here? Are you saying you agree with Yelena and maybe with Kirsten sometimes that fate doesn't exist? Like Dandenong High School's new world is a far cry from the old cells and bells model, where students shuffle to the bell from one sweltering portable to the next. We're going to be looking at onion cells and we're also going to be looking at our own skin cells off the back of our hands. Now cells of 50 students stay in their learning centres for all their core subjects only leaving their house for specialist classes like art and PE. For teachers shuddering at the thought of 50 pupils, each class has three, allowing for breakaway tutoring or discussions. You're not in your average classroom where you're stuck together at one table. You can really move around and it's just good that we can work with our own little groups. But what gave her the idea? How do you accommodate 2,100 students in a meaningful learning um, environment and engage and keep them at school. We uh, travelled around the world, had a look at that, um, found a little bit of an idea, a germ of an idea in New Zealand, built around the kind of family units. Most learning areas are open plan, with large windows facing into a central commons room. Curriculum needs to drive building design and you need to have a variety of spaces tailored to the way you, you want to teach students and the way they indeed want to learn. So what you see in our learning spaces today are a mixture of small and large spaces, closed and open spaces, spaces where presentations can be done. The principal says these physical spaces help students' headspace, which he says for many here can be clouded by family responsibilities. In between cramming for her year 12 exams, 
Sahima Sabiri is caring for her six siblings while her parents are overseas. I have to cook, um, probably clean the house and yeah, I make sure they you know they eat and their breakfast, their lunch for school, their recess time things. Yeah, so it's not hard, but it's a lot of work. <laughs> and Hamed Ba works at Lupino's fruit stall at the Dandenong Market, so he can send his paycheck to family members who didn't make it out of Africa. Actually, I've got a delivery for you now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, Dye's like? <laughs> Dye <laughs> orders just over here. Yeah. These spaces are helping along the dreams of the student population. I think it's running in my blood, like, I can't help it, I just want to play, play, play. I hope to play, like, for Melbourne Storm, yeah, as a rugby player. They want to know about what they already know about, why stealing people and stopping smuggling land. My music is improving, like, my English is improving, like, rapping in English. I used to rap in French. Now I take it more seriously to express myself. You know, um, to, to ease my pain, to forget about all the sufferings, and um, yeah, move on. Blood, Dama is the murder, 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 murder. Dandenong High School student population is represented by self proclaimed former ratbag and aspiring Prime Minister Jack Taylor. I used to take things a little too far, and I used to sort of uh, just talk a little too much, and a lot of you know, problems, you know, back at home sort of thing. It was the encouragement award in year seven. Really from that year seven, from just getting that award, I finally woke up to myself and said, you know what, I want to make something out of life. And, and no matter what anyone else thinks in Victoria, Dandenong this, Dandenong that, it's, the peep, it's, where, it's not where you come from, it's where you're going. The future plays a crucial part of this school's design and priorities. It won an international award this year for outstanding school facility. Each of the uh, house buildings has a 25,000 litre rainwater tank that serves the um, drinking needs in the buildings and the toilets and the kitchen areas. We have solar uh, energy on the roof of uh, each of the house buildings which contributes around about 10% of the electricity needs of, the, of each of the learning centres. Evaporative cooling in the summertime and a gas-fired heating system in the winter. The wind vents beneath the learning centres circulate fresh air six times an hour yet another of the school's tricks to hold students' attention. The rest of the students' seven homes will be completed within the year, all named after Australian plants with their own house colour. You can't really take pride in a portable that you go to every couple of weeks. You can't really take pride in a dilapidated brick building. I mean, you, when you walk into these uh, buildings, the whole school will be worth $40 million within a couple of years. When you walk into your Banksia house, and you're from Banksia, and when you walk in there, you take pride in it. Rachel Brown with that report.